Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and I am excited. In the description of contacts, it says one speaker module, one speaker module, which is obviously not what it is. So let's get the bag open. Um, I've given up trying to open these by ripping them open, so just put a small incision. And more bubble wrap! Yay! I, I don't know what this fascination with bubble wrap is of mine, but I do love the stuff. So, so I've got this um, ESR transistor checker module, pre-assembled, um, which I ordered probably a couple of weeks ago, and that's come in the mail, but something I ordered on like the 25th of the November still hasn't got here. Anyway, uh, David Jones from EEV Blog has already done a review on this uh, in one of his mailbags because one of his uh, subscribers sent him it. But I actually bought this module, which comes with an acrylic case to assemble. So at least you're assembling something. So that's the module there. It requires a 9 volt battery, which I just so happen to have. So we plug that in and uh, we press the power button, or the on button. Yeah, so it says no unknown or damaged part on the display. Well, obviously, because I haven't stuck anything in the holes to test it. So I believe you just plug in one, two, three in those positions. So I've got a 2N3906, which is a PMP transistor, and I think I can plug it in this uh, socket anyway around. And I'm going to test this transistor with it and see if uh, it helps to open it first. I don't really think it matters which way around you insert it, but I can't actually get it to go, at least I think it's in there. That will identify what it is, it's a PNP transistor with a HFE of 304, mm, not bad. So we'll try a 2N3904 which is the MPN equivalent. Or complementary equivalent. So I'll just pop that in the tester. This socket is really, really crappy, I must admit. Let's see if that works anyway. No, okay, I'll try holding it. Okay, it's an NPN transistor with a HFE of 401. Okay, let's try testing an MPF102, which is a FET. Uh, so, I'll bend the leads. I'll just hold it there. It definitely does say it's an N channel FET. So, it tells me what pins are what. So pin 1 is the gate, pin 2 is the drain, and pin 3 is the source. So, so far this tester is working. It does have its limitations. Okay, so I can actually measure ESR. So I've just got a couple of, or bag of electrolytics here, which I'm not sure what value they are offhand. Uh, these are really small to read. Uh, 10 microfarad 50 volt. So if I put that in positions 1 and 2, ESR of that is apparently 2.3 ohm and it measures at 10.65 microfarad. Okay, so with actually without a um, table of what the expected ESR of these values should be. I don't know if that's 
correct or not. It probably isn't really that accurate. According to Dave Jones from EEV Blog, um, they're not uh, that accurate. He's got a very expensive ESR meter which he actually cross-reference cross his testing uh, pieces with and found that there was like about 10% error. But it's alright for what it is. So really all I'm going to use this for is probably testing uh, pinouts of transistors so I know where the base collector emitter or drain gate source are um, and not really worry about it too much as an ESR meter. But uh, what I will do is I've got some time before I have to go to work. I've got approximately yeah, two hours or an hour and a half. So I'm going to assemble the little case that it comes with. Um, put the thing together and uh, yeah, be done with it. Like the last kit, I'm going to keep the plastic bag because they always come in handy for something. Now there's no instructions with this, so I've got uh, well, four spacers, some bolts and nuts. Um, this looks like better than the last kit where you don't actually have to mount a bolt and a nut through the, through the edge of something to um, hold it together, so it shouldn't be that hard to assemble. So first I'm going to take all of this uh, crap off. I suppose, and um, yeah, then uh, lay the parts out on the bench. Go ying acrylic sheet. Mm. Okay, that was harder than necessary, but I've got the backing tape off. Got a nice pile of crap there. So anyway, uh, this looks like the top because there's a cutout for that socket with the lever on it, and also a big hole for the button in it. And this would be the bottom panel because this looks like where the battery holder goes so if I put it relative to this that's how it would go now they've just got a piece of double sided tape here plus three screw holes now let's look at our bag of screws now, from what I can see, there are no screws or threaded screws in here that uh, would go through this portion. Ah, that would make more sense, turning it around that way. Yes, that makes more perfect sense there. Now, I'm assuming these uh, nylon standoffs are used to prop the board up on, and we use the shortest bolts and nuts because there's four long ones and four short ones so in order to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first bolt through and I might take the battery out of the thing so I'm not um, putting any extra weight on it that I don't need to if I can even get the thing out That's the battery out of the way. So I'm going to get my first nut on there. Start it. Okay, and once I get this fourth one started, I can go about tightening them up. Button just fell off. I'll leave that off for a minute. Okay, put the knob back on. Now that the main board is mounted, I can then I guess mount this, although if those leads were out of my way, that'd be nice. Okay, so there's no screws for that, but what I'll just do is I'll use their double sided tape that they've already provided, pull off the 
backing there because I really assume this is what they want you to do and just line up with the three location holes and push it down and now that battery holder is mounted so it's just a matter of mounting the sides together so I don't think it's really critical which way around these go although there is a notch here I'm not sure why there's a different this side has no notch but it has a hole in it <laughs> okay so I don't think it's really all that critical uh, so I'll just mount that and that side together if I can get them to agree with myself there is a that ribbon cable is getting in the way okay that's that's the top corner now for the bottom and it sort of goes together something like that so all I need to do now is put the top on after I put the battery back in and lose a side that, put the top on, this, like, oops I pressed the button by accident, trying to get this to line up with the, uh, with the little uh, cutouts so that it goes down flush, which it's currently not doing, it's one size giving me a little bit of grief here. What it's doing is pushing the button. Uh, that's in. That's in. Gotta be a real pain every time you gotta change the battery to have to go through this trying to line the stupid thing up. And I honestly don't think that buttonhole is big enough, really. So, I don't know what's going on here, but this is not lining up. Okay, Chinese people that make this stuff, if you're going to put it in a case, put it in a case that has four walls and sides that are already assembled. So all you got to do is just screw, screw a top on, because this is absolutely, unnecessarily ridiculous. And the fact that is, if it hasn't been cut perfectly square, which I don't think it has, then there is no way in hell it's going to fit together without, well, I mean, look at that. The button's crooked and doesn't even push properly. So, the only way I'm going to solve this problem is to enlarge this hole. That's about the only thing I can do is enlarge the hole. So that's what I'm going to do because it's not going to work this way so I'll enlarge the hole. I'm going to use a step a bit and my drill press. I'm using the bag that it came in just to protect the surface and bring scratch from the deck. Upsized at one, just make sure we're running it in the other direction. I reckon that hole should be big enough now. I'll just clean it up and uh, continue on. Okay, when you've got to modify the size of a hole in something that should just simply assemble. Uh, you know there's something wrong. Okay. Uh, put the right way around might help. Yeah, 
here you can see how far off that hole is. There is no way that was going to fit. Uh, it does now, but that's only because I made the hole bigger. What a piece of crap. Anyhow, it's really much of a match as to which way to put these screws around, so I might yeah, I'll put them in the same way as the other ones, so it's coming up through the top. Because there's going to be an awful lot of thread there. Okay, I've got these two sides around the wrong way. Uh, this side goes over here because there's a, a notch cut in it to allow this thing to swing backwards. So if I just swap these around, then it should be all good. Uh, it still doesn't make any difference to the uh, hole alignment in the top panel. Um, if you're the Chinese person that invented this, or made this thing I should say, you should be ashamed of yourself. Just saying. So that now that when we put the top on, and line everything up flat, we can close the test point. So I now know that that's the right way around, so I can then go about putting the screws back in to hold it together. There we go. The ESR and transistor tester. Um, I'll put uh, the correct model and whatever else up in the title there so you can see what I'm actually talking about because I can't remember offhand what it is. But yeah, this, this hole here, the alignment of that is pretty bad. Uh, I had to drill it out two sizes just to make it fit. That's, that's ridiculous. But even so, I've got a bit of plastic still there, but that's all right. It works. The case is a piece of crap, as I just said. But um, other than that, yeah, it's okay. It's not really good as an ESR meter because it's not very accurate, but and it can't measure certain types of MOSFETs either. Anyhow, I'm the Astro30. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description as usual. Anyway, this is the Astro30 saying, see ya, have a great day. Yeah, right.